if it is, I can and show you where you can read more in-depth description. So um, it would be under electromagnetic induction. It could be under any one of O oh, or this. Let's check. So this is one type of demo you can see. Um, I don't know if, uh, yeah. Um, hmm. This a particular demo I'm using is not um, shown here. So I, I guess I'll just have to try to give a little bit of description as I'm doing it. Um, yeah, yeah, this isn't exactly right. That one is launching a ring. And, um, all right, yeah, I'll just have to talk through since uh, it. Uh, so the demonstration I'll be showing is related to this because it uh, eddy currents that are responsible for the mechanical motion that you will see. But the or geometric arrangement isn't exactly the same. So I'll give a bit of, I'll pause the video here and there and give a little bit of description. So, um, so this is the setup. Uh, what you see here is the copper tube. And um, uh, right now you don't see it, uh, but there are uh, two slugs that look very similar, but are different. Let me just start playing the video and uh, I'll comment and pause as necessary. So that cutout is there so that you can see through the side of the copper tube and you can see from this end the point view that there's nothing special. In there. It's a copper tube. It's a tube made of conducting material, the conducting part being important. So I'm going to support it vertically. And all the standard stuff, they are um, they can be made of aluminum. Um, they are not ferromagnetic, that's the important thing. So these are the two slugs. Uh, this is one of them that looks like that. And this is the other slug, it also looks metallic. Now, when I drop that, Nothing surprising. And let's look at this other slug. So it's uh, sliding down very slowly. And this is the result of Faraday's law and Lenz's law. So what's happening as this slug is sliding down is you have to imagine this slug as a kind of a bar magnet but uh, maybe a very strong bar magnet. So um, I, I forget which end is North Pole, which end is South Pole. Uh, for the purpose of uh, illustration, it doesn't matter. Let's say it's North Pole at one end and South Pole at the other end. So that um, this uh, permanent, permanent magnet generates a magnetic field that looks maybe something like this. So. As this magnet is sliding down, you have um, magnetic flux um, through different, um, you can imagine different loops. Um, I guess for one purpose, you can imagine loops that go around um, the uh, tube, except uh, in this particular tube, that loop is interrupted. But if you imagine the sides were closed, then the, <laughs> That's the easiest loop to imagine. So if you imagine loops like this, then as this magnet uh, falls down, the magnetic flux through this loop is changing. So um, so you have magnetic flux that's uh, um, poking upward. And it's uh, as this magnet slides down and moves away, it's decreasing in strength. So the change in flux is happening in the downward direction. This would be the change in magnetic flux. And Lenz's law says that, um, or sorry, Faraday's law says that if uh, uh, th there's an electric, um, the line integral of electric field or uh, voltage, that there's a voltage associated with the rate of change of magnetic flux. So there's a voltage induced around this loop. And Lenz's law, which is referring to this minus sign here, says that there's a, uh, you can figure out the direction of the magnetic, uh, di direction of the electric field this way. 
that if you imagine the current being produced by this voltage, induced voltage, then the direction of current is such that that it opposes the direction of the original change in magnetic flux. So um, here, let me use my one of my shortcut right-hand rules. So I want the induced magnetic flux to point upward. So I would want, um, as viewed from uh, top, I would want my current to, to flow um, uh, counterclockwise. So I want my current to flow uh, maybe in this direction, uh, counterclockwise. Uh, from this side, it'll be going kind of into the uh, plane here. It's coming out of the plane. Now, if you imagine a, a current loop that's going like that, then looking at that, um, you would say, oh, so uh, current loop going that way, it's going to generate magnetic field that looks like this. These will be the magnetic fields produced by the induced current. And, um, and as you look at this uh, induced current or the magnetic field due to the induced current, if these magnetic fields remind you of uh, magnetic field of a magnet with the North Pole at one end and South Pole at the other end, then that should remind you of that. That's what they look like. And in, in mechanical terms, this is what's happening. This is South Pole end is attracting this North Pole end, slowing down the falling magnet. And you can do this kind of analysis consideration for any loops um, within the, the conductor that's sur sur surrounding this mag moving magnet. And what you'll find is that direction of this magnet will always be oriented in such a way that it opposes the motion of the magnet. The, the permanent magnet that's uh, original, causing the original change in magnetic flux. So if you did an analysis like what I'm doing up here, analysis for this loop will show that, oh, it's not north and south, it's a south and north, so that the south pole is repelling the south pole and again, slowing it down. And it happens for basically all the geometries that involves a moving magnet near a conducting material. So th that's why we give it a special name because it's not the specific geometry that's important, it's the effect. Effect is that it produces eddy current. Uh, we call it eddy current because if you visualize the currents within the body of that conducting material, it looks like a uh, the water flowing, water eddies, and um, and directions of those eddy currents are always such that that it mechanically slows down the magnet. So that's what this demonstration is showing, um, and that's uh, so. So with uh, these induced currents, the magnet is being slowed down, which is why you are seeing it takes so long to slide down that relatively short section of the copper tube. Uh, I think I had a couple more demonstrations with this video. Let me just play through. Oh, I think I want you to slide both of them down together. Uh, one of them is a ferromagnetic, so they do stick together. But it's overall heavier, so it falls down faster. And I think I want you to give you a little bit of a closer up, so that will be the next segment, and then We'll move on. Just the magnet, not the ferromagnetic slot, just magnet. Also, I can just move it up to accommodate falling. Uh, fun. Um, yeah, it's a fun demo. In an in-person lecture, I would have, um, I, I would have. <laughs> Um, passed around the demo. In fact, I have three of them so that I can pass it around the whole class. But, you know, one downside of online classes is that you can't pass around physical demos. So, so that's a, um, eddy current demonstration that I wanted to show you.